Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I want to talk about numerical item design. This comes from a very good question from Homicidal Pacifist, who asked, can you talk a bit about item implementation? How do you decide what types of items go in games, especially those with more unique effects like the shrink ray from Outer Worlds? For clarification, and I asked for clarification on this, I was thinking about the various ways that items are designed in games from the more build crafting and grinding for 0.5% more fire damage approach, like Diablo, to more of your weapon type affects your playstyle approach, like Monster Hunter. And was wondering if you could maybe share your thoughts about the pros and cons of each for player or developer perspective. Very good question. I'm glad I asked for clarification because asking about item implementation, I would have gone on about how to do it in code. This is really a question about the item's designs. So... The first thing I want to say is just talking about the philosophy of item design is a really, really complicated question. And it can be answered in so many different ways because, first of all, look at all the different item types there are in a game. There are the things you can wear, which is armor, and it can have different pieces for different parts of your body, and including your head and your, your legs and your arms and your torso. But there are also rings and amulets and gadgets. And these are just things that you can wear. Then there's wielded stuff like weapons and shields and if it's a fantasy game, maybe like an orb or something. And of course there's um, consumed things like potions or drugs, depending on your setting, scrolls, batteries, if you're a, a sci-fi setting. So because of that, you could, you, you could, you could, you could use that as the, the, the design philosophy high level. But you also have to make sure your items fit your setting. For example, do you have a fantasy game or a sci-fi game? Like I just mentioned, you'd have orbs and fantasy and batteries and sci-fi. But you also have to think about your mechanics. If you make a class-based game instead of a skill-based game, your items have to reflect that and give bonuses that are appropriate to classes or skills. Similarly, if you make a turn-based combat rather than real-time combat, some of your items are going to affect that. Maybe they give you an earlier sequence in turn-based. Maybe they give you more action points to spend during turns versus real-time, which may say you swing a sword a little faster. It's you, you, you have to know what your setting and mechanics are before you even think about item design. But there are some things that are common to all of the different philosophies. It is, are these items aspirational? Meaning, do players want to get these items that are better? Um, and this isn't just in terms of their design, but also in terms of their look, which I'll talk about a little when I get into pros and cons. Are there enough items for all the different player builds that can be made? All the different classes and class race combinations and skill combinations. Are you covering those adequately with all of your items? And then, are those items extensible? Meaning, there's an obvious better version to it. So if you get you know, a sword, here's a better version of a sword. And this is not just for player, because I'm gonna talk about comparability next. It's for things like crafting. Like when you get a recipe for a better version of a sword, is it obviously a better version? Which leads me into comparability. Can the player look at two items and make a decision on which one is better probably for their build. Because sometimes there are clear answers to that and sometimes you deliberately want to design it so that, well, I'm gonna have to give up a little something that I want to get something else that I want. And we'll talk about that. Because to get back to Homicidal Pacifist's uh, question, he was effectively asking me for the design philosophy of numerical item design. And I'm gonna talk about that in terms of numerical versus non-numerical. And let's, let's talk about what that means. Numerical item design is when the designer is primarily concerned with things like the, num the numbers attached to the items that become bonuses and adjustments to parameters in the game. Things like a hit bonus, or critical hit bonus, or critical damage bonus, or damage amounts in both terms of direct damage or damage over time, dots. Attribute bonuses or secondary bonuses that are normally controlled by attributes. So if your strength gives you more carry weight, maybe an item gives you more carry weight directly. So it, it doesn't give you more strength, it gives you more carry weight. Basically, anything in your game that's that has a num numerical parameter, items might adjust that parameter. Now compare this to non-numerical item design. These are things like effects 
that can happen when you use the item. Some of them, they can be effects on the player. Maybe you're silent when you wear these boots. Maybe this cloak slows the rate that enemy detect, detect you when you're stealthing. But they also might be effects on the target that you, that you use this item on. Maybe it shrinks them. Maybe it paralyzes them. Maybe they run away in fear for a while. Why these can and usually do have some kind of numerical parameter attached to them. How, you know, much does it slow your rate of stealth detection? How long do they stay paralyzed or feared? The primary purpose, though, is to change how the player acts. Basically, as OP said, it affects their play style. They will think of playing the game a different way because of this item. Not, oh, I'm going to play the same way I always played and this gives me a plus five on that. So let's now dive in to the pros and cons of numerical versus non-numerical item design. I'll start with numerical because I think not only is that easier to imagine, but it makes it nice to contrast with non-numerical. So let's talk about the pros of numerical item design. First of all, it's very easy to design these. You're usually going to make your rule mechanics. It's the third thing you do after setting and story. And those rules are going to have parameters, and there you go. Those are the parameters you want adjusted on your numerical item design. You hit you. You have a chance of hitting someone. This can give you a bonus to hit them. You do this much damage. This can give you a bonus to that damage. Very easy. Very straightforward. And because of that, it's easy to code. I'm talking to you programmers out there. When you get these numerical item designs, you're like, whoo, this is easy. You have parameters you use in your code. You basically collect the parameters from the items and apply them to where you're doing the calculations in the code. The other side benefit of this is those parameters can be exposed to designers. So if they come back later and go, mm, this weapon is too powerful with plus five, can you make it plus four? And the program can go, no, you can do that. It's right here. It's an exposed value. You can change it. Like Unity and Unreal make that really easy for you to do. But another pro for numerical item design is it's very easy to both extend and compare um, items. What that means is it's very aspirational. You get a sword that, and, and you love doing, you love beating people up and it does plus 10 damage and then you get a new one that says plus 20. Yay, that's a better sword. And you really want to use that sword. However, I'm gonna put a caveat in here. Even new, comparing numerical items can be a difficult decision for the player. Do I want to get that armor that's heavier but gives me a higher damage resistance? I'll have to decide, and this is pure numerical. Uh, depends on how I play. If I have a really strong character, I may not care about the armor weighing a little more. If I have a weak character, it's like, oh, I can barely pick up the items I want now. Mm, I'm not going to go with that. So let's get into the numerical cons. Cons of numerical item design, I should say. Sometimes it's really hard to make them super exciting like OP hinted at when you get a 0.5% damage bonus. We, I've mentioned this before, like EverQuest had this issue where when you're on a range of 1,000, did you really care about getting armor that was plus one better? You know, And if you're comparing two weapons and one is 51 damage and the other is 50 damage, okay, the 51 damage is better, but it's not very exciting. It's like, oh, great, I do one more point. And then here's the part that a lot of designers don't think about. Think about your artists. I'm, I'm talking to you now, artists. You know what I'm talking about when you have to make appropriate art for two different items and the difference is minor. I like you like, okay, the artist comes up to you and goes, I made these really cool boots that give you plus 10 to stealth. Now you say there's a diff completely different set of boots that give plus 11 to stealth. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then they're like, can I just make them a different color? And I'm always like, no, I'm colorblind. So they do something like maybe put a little star on it. Now they could make something that looks wildly different, but they probably have hundreds of these to make. And if you throw in a huge range of these things and the difference is plus 10 versus plus 11, these artists are gonna start pulling their hair out after a while because you're, you're asking for a lot of wildly different things and making them look appropriate, both appropriately different and also the plus 11 should look a little better than the plus 10. It gets hard to do after a while. Similarly, it's hard to compare. I've already talked about how two numerical items can have a little bit of difficulty comparing, but if you have a numerical and non-numerical item, and I'll jump into numerical and non-numerical in a second, you have to make a choice. Let, like, let's say you have a, an, a weapon that does more damage, and you have another weapon that gives you a higher chance of your stealth attack being successful. 
Which one of those are better weapons? Because you fight all the time, but your stealth damage bonus is higher. And this will make you do more stealth um, attacks. But then you're like, well, wait, how much will it improve? And is it better than the damage I'm getting all the time from this one? And of course, that depends on a lot of factors. Like how often do you try to do a stealth attack? What is your stealth skill? Some of this can be calculated out numerically. And you see people make spreadsheets for games all the time. But it's hard. And it's not so straightforward to go, oh, that not numerical item and that non-numerical item are trivial to compare. And some of the comparisons Matt, your build takes into account. So you may see somebody online going, oh, go with the stealth one. And you're like, I never do stealth attacks. Why would I do that? So let's, let's jump into non-numerical item design and talk about pros and cons for that because they're different. Let's talk about the pros of a non-numerical item. First of all, there's a lot more cool and therefore aspirational effects that you can put on non-numerical items. We're talking an item that may polymorph your enemy into a cow or knock them back or make them explode. And by the way, that could lead to then chain explode. Like they explode and nearby people explode when they get hit with the explosion. This is cool and it's very aspirational and it allows players to think of their build styles and let their imagination run wild and create really interesting, fun characters. Similarly, artists have more to go on to inspire them for the look and the effects. Not just the, like, making the explosion look cool and making, you know, polymorph look cool and knockback look cool, but also the item itself can have something really cool about it because it does something, and that may inspire them for the look of the item. But let's talk about the cons, non cons of non-numerical items. It can be hard, I've already mentioned, to compare numerical and non-numerical items together, but it is hard to compare two non-numerical items. Like, what's better, stunning someone or knocking them back? Stunning them means, you know, they may stand there not doing anything. Knock back, they get, but they, knock back, they get pushed away, and then they have to stand back up and come back. Which one's better? Is it just which one lasts longer? Maybe, maybe not. It depends on what your, your play style is. It's also a lot harder to, to design non-numerical items items. First of all, you have to have ideas for these because it's not just as simple as here's a number and a parameter we've already got in a, in a formula. But then you have to balance these ideas. Like, is polymorph doable? Is it possible? How do you balance that? If I polymorph someone into a fish, they're just going to die. I don't have to do anything else. And then extensibility is an issue because non-numerical extensibility can be hard. I mentioned if something makes you explode, if an item makes you explode, and then an obvious extensible thing is chain explosion, where if they explode and they hit people nearby, maybe they explode. What's the next thing after chain explosion? It's, it's not very clear what you should do next. Also, and I'm back talking to you programmers, it is way harder to code these non-numerical effects. Every single one needs special code. You are usually tying into your status effect system and the art systems and animation systems, and it's just a lot harder than going from plus 10 damage to plus 20 damage. Every science weapon in the Outer Worlds had special code associated with it. So it was a lot harder to code those than to code the numerical item designs. And remember, more code, harder code, leads to more bugs, more debugging time, more testing, etc. All that. One last thing I want to say, I think that's all of the things I can think of, is as with every feature I've ever talked about, some players have a preference. They even have a preference, you know, some may like numerical items, some may like non-numerical some even have a preference that's based on their player build. The character they made, that one they prefer numerical items, the other one they prefer non-numerical. It really depends. So there is no clear answer, which is why I like to do these pros and cons, cons lists. Anyway, homicidal pacifist, I hope this answered your question.